Hey, it's Mike Hambright with FlipNerd.com. Welcome back for another exciting VIP interview where I interview some of the most successful real estate investing experts and entrepreneurs in our industry to help you learn and grow. Today, I'm joined by Eddie Speed, who's a friend of mine. He's a great guy. Uh, even though I've interviewed people in, from other countries, Eddie actually is only about 20 minutes away from me right now, uh, even though we're doing this via Skype. But he's widely known to be the leader in the seller financing and non-performing note areas. And uh, Eddie is the founder of the Note School, which is recognized as the market leader in teaching others how to invest in notes. So today we're going to have a lesson from Eddie on notes, kind of a notes 101 uh, interview here on flipnerd.com. Before we get started with Eddie, though, let's take a moment to recognize our featured sponsors. RealtyMogul.com is an online marketplace for real estate investing, connecting borrowers and capital from accredited and institutional investors. Get a rehab loan fast and close in as little as 10 days. Rates start as low as 9%. We'd also like to thank National Real Estate Insurance Group, the nation's leading provider of insurance to the residential real estate investor market. From individual properties to large-scale investors, National Real Estate Insurance Group is ready to serve you. Please note, the views and opinions expressed by the individuals in this program do not necessarily reflect those of FlipNerd.com or any of its partners, advertisers, or affiliates. Please consult professionals before making any investment or tax decisions, as real estate investing can be risky. Hey, Eddie. Welcome to the show. Hey, Mike. How are you doing? Good, good. We could have we could have just come to one one another's office or something and done this in person. Literally, but, uh, I, like you, I, I do I do interviews and stuff all over the country. Yeah, uh, certainly weekly, if not many times a week. And uh, you you and I could have had breakfast together, but yeah. uh, it does it does the structure works a little better doing it like yeah, this. Yeah, well, hey, good to see you, and thanks so much for joining yes, us sir. today. And um, yeah. there's this whole other world out there of notes that a lot of people are involved with, but there's a lot of other people that are real estate investors that don't participate in notes at all. And so, as we kind of talked about, I think it's a great opportunity to kind of have a notes 101 lesson a little bit. Um, sure. But before we get started, though, I know a lot of folks know you, and there's probably a bunch of listeners of the show that, that maybe don't know you. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and how you got into the niche of, of the note world? Well, I really got into it by accident. Uh, I started in 1980. Uh, my father-in-law and another guy were kind of the pioneers of buying discounted seller finance notes, uh, literally across the United States. There were very few people that that did it, if almost it, almost none. And uh, they really perfected it. And I started with them. I was a young guy, 20 years old. Uh, I laugh and tell people I was clueless. I, I thought alone was being by myself. <laughs> so. Um, so I, I just sort of fell into it. Uh, that was in Mississippi. Moved to uh, Dallas Fort Worth area in 1982. Married my wife, and uh, we moved here uh, for the purpose of coming here to buy discounted real estate notes and uh, bought seller financing, performing notes from the early 80s. Then got involved also in addition to. Uh, buying non-performing notes back in the good old RTC days when all the banks and savings and loans were going broke yep. and uh, have continued to buy both sides of notes pretty much all along, along the way since then. Okay, okay. And um, why don't you talk about, uh, at some point, don't talk, talk about this quite yet, but how the opportunity differs when you're in periods like the 80s when we had double-digit interest rates versus today when interest rates are you know, considerably less than that. But I guess before we get into that, why don't you just just kind of take it from the top and tell people what a note is? Well, you know, probably the most single, most common question, Mike, I've, I've, I'm ever asked is, you know, I think I understand real estate. I certainly watch you flip this house on TV or that kind of thing. And I understand about being a landlord, but I don't understand about being a note. And so I always... I, I do speaking engagements all the time across the country, and I'm like, how many of you guys have owned a note? And, you know, 5% of the audience will raise their hand every time, meaning 95% think they've never owned a note. Right. And then I pop up on the screen a picture of a check, and I fill the check out, you know, kind of animate it and fill the check out on stage, you know, as it's I'm talking. And I'm like, how many of you have owned a note now? And, you know, the answer, they'll all raise their hand. I've all owned a note. So a check is a note. We buy installment notes. So we buy notes where it has an interest rate and payable over time. And we buy notes at a discount. And so the best way I describe that, Mike, is if I gave you a thousand dollar check and you didn't have a checking account, could you go cash the check somewhere? 
and you'd say, yeah, I'd get on Google and I'd find a check cashing service and I'd go cash the check, right? And would they cash the check? Yeah. Probably so. Yeah. What's the catch? Most people would say they're going to charge a fee. Well, technically that's not correct. They would simply pay less for the check than was the, written on the check. Yeah. They would buy your note at a discount. Yeah. Eddie still owes a thousand bucks. So we buy discounted real estate notes, meaning we pay less than the amount of the note secured by real estate. So uh, give an example with a house. So you have a house that somebody has a loan on uh, for $100,000. So, $100, so let's, let's say that say. you owner financed a house, okay? Uh, you, 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 you had a house and you sold it for a hundred grand. They paid 10,000 down. You have a $90,000 note payable over 30 years. And you come to me and you say, Eddie, I want to sell this note. Well, I'm not going to give you 90 grand. I'm going to give you 65 or 70 grand. Mm -hmm. So I give you $70,000 for the note. I collect the $90,000 plus interest over the life of the loan. I don't get all the money up front and you got less than the face amount of the note because you got the money up front. Right. Now, let's say, Mike, that you own the first national bank of uh, Mike, okay? And, and you owned a bank and you had uh, made a mortgage loan and somebody defaulted. They weren't paying. And you said, Eddie, I got a, a deal and this customer hadn't paid in three or four years and we want to sell the note. And I basically just kind of back into the price of the note, uh, kind of like a pawn shop would. Yeah. You know, based on a percentage of the value of the real estate, let's say the house was worth a hundred, I'd say, well, even after I pay the taxes, even after I pay for the legal fees, I don't want more than 50,000 bucks in the deal. So I kind of back into that budget and say, well, I'll pay 42,000 for the note. Mm -hmm. So I give you 42,000, the note could be 70,000 or it could be 170,000. Right. And so that's basically the concept of I buy a note at less than what they owe. I buy paying notes and I buy notes that aren't paying. Okay. Okay. And so what you just described there, is that that's typically what's referred to as a performing note versus a non-performing note? That is correct. Okay. Okay. So talk about this in the context of the different sides of a party that you typically deal with. You have note buyers that are buying maybe from investors or maybe from lending institutions. Yeah. And then you have the investor side that is happy to sell them to you at a discount, much like right. a wholesaler would sell a house for less than what the face value is because they're just trying to make a smaller spread and get their money back faster. Right. So I'll kind of fast forward you. Over the past 34 years, I've bought notes about every way you can do it. I'm the first guy in the United States to ever go to the courthouse and kind of figure out you could do courthouse research and find people that own or finance their property and mail them a letter, hey, you can sell your note. And I'd say probably a third of the people literally <laughs> on your, you know, that are listeners to, to the, your show go, oh, yeah, I've seen, I've, I own or finance one time and somebody did that. So, you know, I've done it a lot of different ways. Yeah. Today, we deal much more with investment firms, what I refer to as hedge funds. We do a lot more of that today than we do just dealing with individuals. Okay. And, the, and the simple reason is this. Um, our executive team has bought $3 billion in discounted mortgages. So we're in the club. Yeah. You know, it's, if, there's a, if there's a society to buy discounted notes, We've been, we, we get invited to the chapter meeting. You got the so ring. Exactly. So, um, and, and so there's investment firms that bought tons of bank foreclosed properties in bulk. Okay. And they were inexpensive houses and they owner financed them. Typically, other than in Texas, they probably did it on a land contract and they sold them via a land contract. And it's just a receivable where they owner finance the house and they're getting paid mortgage payments every month in lieu of renting it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now that now they have an expiration date on their hedge fund. So they've got they're three or four years into it and they've prom promised these investors they're gonna give them their investment money back plus their return. And so now they need to sell these notes to to basically liquidate the assets in that investment fund, um, you know, to give to the investors. And uh, so we can buy 200 notes at a time or 500 notes at a time or 1,000 notes at a time with less brain damage than trying to just buy one-off note. Yeah. I certainly know how to do it. There's a dimension of note school where we teach people how to do that, but it's not what we personally focus on so much because 
there's an incredible inventory of really good performing notes that we can buy at a discount. And then basically we buy, we, we have a private equity fund. So we raise money to buy these assets and then we resell them. And it's as simple as we buy them by the case and sell them by the bottle. Yeah. Yeah. And, and when you teach people, Eddie, at Note School, are you primarily teaching them how to participate in these bigger uh, institutionalized transactions? Or are you teaching people, like if somebody said, I want to get started in notes and they're an individual and a small fry, uh, where do they start? Well, there's so many of these notes being disseminated, both performing and non-performing. So the analogy I just gave you was the analogy of how we would find a performing note. Okay. Yeah. The non-performing note um, is just simply a matter of inventory. There's currently about 300,000 REO properties. Okay. There is currently about 9 million defaulted notes. Wow. So the inventory imbalance of notes versus bank foreclosed properties is pretty incredible. And so there's a, there's a distribution system. Uh, the really big banks, the top 50 banks own 90% of this inventory. Mm -hmm. So if, and so what happens is, is there's, they're always out there looking for an opportunity of how they're going to sell these uh, notes. And so they sell them these really big investment firms, the ones you've read about, Oak Tree, Roosevelt, Blackstone, Carrington Colony, all of these guys. Yeah. And they are typically not going to keep the lower price band notes. So the more inexpensive notes, it just doesn't fit their long-term investment model. And so they immediately package those notes up and resell them. So they initially kind of when they run their pricing, determine what they're going to pay for the whole portfolio, they price these knowing that they're paying way less for these notes than they are the, the better, higher price band notes that they're going to keep. Okay. And so then they resell them in the marketplace to firms like us, not just us, but we certainly do that. Yeah. And then what happens is that we uh, re-disseminate these assets in the marketplace as little as to a one-off investor. Okay. So, Eddie, kind of clarify there. Well, you just said that they're, they primarily are going to sell off the lower dollar value properties. Why is, why is that and where is that line typically at? They, they, they basically take the position we got billions of dollars okay. and they don't want, they don't want to, they don't want to keep 30, 25, 30,000 bucks out on one asset. Okay. You know, it's just not, they can't, you know, it's just, they're trying to drive a significant model and they just, you know, there's part of it. They're just going to kind of lop off and just determine it's just not going to fit what they even want to try. Yeah. Just horsepower of people. Right. Right. Yeah. So when you buy a portfolio of notes, uh, like you just mentioned, then where do you go from there? What do you do next? Well, you know, one of the, one goal is whenever we buy these assets, we have to do enough due diligence when we buy them to make sure that we're happy with them. We may never sell a note. So we got to make sure that what we bought, we like, we like, and we can live with. Yeah. But we note school clearly is a unique model because we're training people to buy these assets all the time. And for the most part, that's who we sell. Um, sell these notes to is people that have been to some facet of note school and learned a little bit about the business. I really selling a non-performing note to somebody that knows absolutely nothing. That's kind of, that's, that probably doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. And, and when you said you, you may never sell the note. So what is your, what's your, I know you have multiple exit strategies, just like on uh, the wholesaling and rehabbing side, but sure. typically what you're trying to do is you buy them at a discount. They're performing and you're just basically acting as you're just the, you're the lender at that point where payments are being made to you and you're making a return on the investment you made. Is that right? That's correct. So once again, we buy two types of assets. We buy notes that are paying. We buy notes that are not paying. Yeah. We pay a higher percentage for the notes that are paying, obviously, than the notes that aren't paying. Because there's less risk, okay. right? E exactly. And, and so the notes that are paying, we, we buy them at a good return. We resell some of those notes there. We work with several self-directed IRA administration companies, folks like that. The IRA administration uh, industry is a lot of people are sitting with uninvested funds, what you'll hear me refer to as dry cash. Yeah. And so it's critical in the marketplace that as the rental property market has gotten tighter, that there's an alternative that really does work. And buying performing notes it's really a lot easier than owning a rent property. And you and I were visiting 
you know, and just very recently, and you were saying exactly that. Yeah. I mean, you just you'd rather have a note than than a rent property right. if all things were equal. Right. And we kind of help people do that and know what that really how that could work. Sure, sure. Now, a non-performing note, I refer to us as a pawn shop for real estate. Meaning, everybody's seen the show on the History Channel or whatever. Yeah. Everybody kind of understands the concept of a pawn shop, right? Yeah. Figure out what the as-is value the, of the collateral is, and you just back into a percentage of that. Yeah, and, and what is the typical hope with... So there's obviously a couple different options with non-performing notes. Either you can work with people and try to get them performing again, or That's you can just go take the asset back and do something else with it, right? Well, there's really three things. We call it the waterfall, okay. right? There's really three things you can do. Modify the customer, and we're going to do everything we can to get a customer that is currently living in the property still to modify and get them paying again. And because we bought the note cheap, we can be super flexible. Yeah. Right? Reduce the balance, reduce the interest rate, all kind of cool stuff. Forgive, back penalties, whatever, whatever makes sense, right? We're, we're a lot more flexible than hemp and hard. Yeah. And, and the reason you do that, just to clarify, the reason you do that is because you don't have to go in and fix it up. You don't have to have all the transaction costs of buying and selling it. I mean, you're trying to eliminate any, uh, all those expenses plus any vacancy issues, right? Well, I mean, we're, we we want the best for these people. Yeah. I mean, you know, we know something, we know some glitch happened in their life. We don't want we're not trying to take somebody's house that can walk themselves out of the debt that they have. Right. Okay. Somebody that is currently living in a house has no source of income, no source of anything. Uh, that's probably an unrealistic expectation. Right. But somebody that has had a, a blip in their life and recovered enough that they could repay it, even if we reduce the balance or the rate or whatever is going to make sense for all parties, we want to do that. About 40% of the assets we see are occupied. Now, some percentage of those are going to be rentals. Some percent are going to be owner-occupied, meaning 60% of the defaulted notes we see, the houses are vacated. And when they vacated the house, they just went away from it. Right. The banks didn't do a good job of deed, and of deed in lieu of foreclosures, but we do a really good job at it. Yeah. So we reach out to them and say, hey, let's, let's figure out what makes sense for all parties. You know, you want to, you, you just want to, you want this to go away. You don't want the sheriff to show up at your door again or certified letter from the tax office. You're tired of all that. You can deed it to us and walk away with dignity. And, and we do that and we treat them, you know, respectfully in how we handle that. Okay. That's good. Yeah. So give a little context to who, uh, out of your note school, people that come in that are like me, that are individuals that want to learn more. What yeah. role do they typically play? Talk about the kind of the opportunity that exists for people to invest in notes where it, kind of in the context of most people understand, like you said, they understand the house side, they understand the investing yeah. side, but kind of compare the two and the pros and cons of investing directly in um, properties versus the actual notes or that behind there, the financing behind there. So if you, if you really, if you really say, Eddie, who's your avatar? Who, who, who's your guy? Yep. About half of the people we train are really seasoned, uh, meaning that they're a seasoned fix and flip guy, they're a seasoned landlord, or they're a seasoned REO real estate agent. Okay. In other words, they've got, they've done fifty deals to, you know, five thousand deals, yep. and they come to us to learn the note space because it's a much cheaper way to buy the property today than physically buying the property. So the inventory, because of the hedge funds and because of all the pressure with cash investors in the market, have kind of pushed them out of what they did for years, and they they kind of reinvent themselves and they move over in the note space where it's not as competitive, and and that's the typical. Now the other half of the people we train, um, you know, they, they just get they happen to be in the cycle of learning the business or doing whatever, and now all of a sudden, bam, this comes along and. Man, I, this guy said I can be the bank and I don't have to be a landlord and I don't know a whole lot about it, but everybody that says, you know, it's a lot easier to be the bank. Yeah. And, and you know, or, or you know, it, buying non-performing notes is really profitable. Now, I'm not saying it doesn't take some work and some knowledge. Sure, yeah. I'm just saying it's really profitable. It's kind of a what we call a 2x, 3x business, double, triple your money. So it's worth learning. Yeah. And uh, so um, that's kind of my typical 
customer. As you know, uh, you and I are in some, a couple of groups together, and I have some like really mega seasoned people that train with us. And I just been training for this party for thirty years, and it showed up, and I happen to have <laughs> some knowledge that you know uh, outweighs people just getting experience on their own. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So if you talk about uh, if you think of the Maybe share some information because I want people that are listening right now that that are trying to understand the context of how to get into this. Okay. If you're going to be a rehabber, people know that they need to find contractors that do that fix the house up. They need to probably hire yeah. an agent to sell it ultimately. Um, if they're going to wholesale, they know they need to generate leads and and ultimately have a buyer's list that they can sell to. If they're going to be a landlord, they know that they need to have a property manager manage it themselves and deal with that. Talk yeah. about the operational aspects of the note business if you're going to get into that business which are going to include things like loan servicing and what are the things you need like operationally to to be to even be in the business all right well if you're going to buy performing notes um what what you really need is a loan servicer so somebody that buys a performing note from us we generally are going to give them two or three names of people that service loans. Yeah. And from there, it's probably going to be a pretty painless investment. They, they service the loan. They monitor taxes and insurance. They do the reporting to the IRS for the interest the customers paid. And basically, every month, you're getting you get a check. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and I'm not trying to oversimplify sure. it. That's really about as simple as it gets. Yep. With a pretty high percentage chance, that's how it's going to be. You know, there may be two or three percent chance of default, and then and then you'd have to deal with the other side of the fence. Let's say that you buy a non-performing note, or you buy a performing note that goes in default. Okay, then what you're going to do is you're going to be able to through the servicer or through either a network of the servicer or people that Note School kind of helps you connect with. Then you're going to have everybody that can go inspect a property, secure a property you know, a local realtor that deals with, you know, reloading the house that, you know, deals with, with what we call property preservation, any repair issues that need to be done. And all this is a very uh, common industry standard amongst the distressed debt uh, industry. Yeah. So it's not like it's some special sauce that we're acting like we know and nobody else in America knows. Sure, yeah. What I have found is most real estate investors don't know about it, but most everyone that has been, you know, in the asset management business, you know, uh, loss mitigation departments, servicing shops. You know, I, I could take you to conferences where there are literally of hundreds of vendors like that, that that's what they do. Right. So we sort of introduced that idea to real estate investors. In fact, I'll tell you a funny story. You and I are in a mastermind together with a guy and he, there's about 75 uh, different groups in there and really seasoned guys, you know. And, and the guy that runs it calls me the other day and says, hey, Eddie, I need one of these companies that go inspect houses for you. I said, yeah, okay. I connected him and stuff. He said, how much they charge? I said, $16. He said, what? <laughs> $16 and they'll go do a physical inspection of the house with pictures and everything else. So he's got guys that are buying pre-foreclosures that they're using the company now for 16 bucks a house to go look at it because they can't drive to a house for 16 bucks yeah. a house. So there's just there's things that real estate investors can learn about this business that has now kind of become common to us that, uh, you know, they like, wow, that's really cool. Or, you know, and so I tell I tell the people that get enamored with they got to be their own boots, in their own backyard. They're kind of buying into the idea of being just a pure contractor. Yep. Yeah. Anyway. So, Eddie, if if folks want to. Uh, What's a typical place for most people to get started? And I know you have a lot of information. I'm not trying to throw a softball here and tee you up for how they can learn more through Note School, which I think we'll give a link for that. But if people want to learn more about whether that's the right vehicle for them, I think one of the challenges that a lot of newer real estate investors or even me, I've bought hundreds of houses and I, I know very little about notes and I'm enamored by it. I think it's something well, I need to learn more about. But there's a lot of people out there that just want to say, hey, I heard Eddie talk about it. And I need to learn more about whether this is the right vehicle for me. Well, you know, it's good and it's bad for me. The, the bad part is I can't tell you just to go on Google right. <laughs> and, and, and just go find everybody that has something to say about notes because a lot of those people that are talking about notes, in my humble opinion, don't have a great deal of real experience. Right. You know, and uh, it, it, it is, it, there are limited resources to learn it. 
and that's one of the reasons at Note School we built it and it did so well. I mean, uh, I, I don't, I'm not really a guru guy, you know. I'm not a late night TV. I mean, I'm just a, I'm a 34 year Note guy that somewhere along the way, about a dozen years ago, figured out if I could really train people how to do the business, then we could figure out how to do a lot of business together in different ways. Um, you know, I don't think I'm the only guy that knows the business. I think we have the by far the best training in the business and we're competent professionals that do the business. So, you know, as far as learning about it, um, you know, clearly people can do some research and stuff. Just make sure if you're if you're get, getting information and learning the business that whoever's teaching it to you really has done it. Right. You know, and that they have a measurable track record, you know, in the industry of doing it. Um, what I tell people all the time is when you get into it, I see it over and over when we do these classes or do whatever when we interface with, you know, people that we train. They're like, I thought this was going to be complicated. I'm like, no, it's not complicated. It's just there's sort of this idea in people's mind that real estate's easy and, and notes are hard. And and I can tell you, for example, having a rent house versus having a note, that is, it is exactly the opposite. Right. It is that owning a note is super easy. Owning a rent house means you're a landlord. Right. You know, so, um, but, you know, the, the non-performing note space is, you know, you don't want to try that without some guidance to start or some training because, you know, what do they say? Experience is what you get when you're expecting something else. Yeah. You know that kind of thing. <laughs> well, what, what do you what do you think is probably the biggest myth that uh, people that are maybe listening to this, or before you started before we started this show, have about about notes and the opportunity? I don't, I think I think the average person has no clue or idea of this inventory imbalance. And I've done a lot of speaking and engaging. I've done the state of the industry for the National Association of Real Estate Investors for the last couple of years, their national conference. Mm -hmm. And even people that run these real estate investment groups around the country, they're like, wow. And of course, we've got a lot of data that justifies the statements that I'm making. I'm not just, you know, not expecting to go to present to an audience and not justify why we make these, right. these, these claims. But it is true. And and the, op the, the reality is, is that that's why the market is what it is. And I go through a whole cycle of cash investors and what I call stock market refugees explaining people that's left the market. And you saw this. This is why flip nerds became such a popular topic, right? Is because who are you flipping to? You're, you're flipping to people that want to buy houses in lieu of buying stocks anymore. And so there's a whole you know, life cycle for all of us. You and I are really in the same business. Yeah. You know, uh, real estate is um, the collateral for 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 me, and real estate is the subject for you. Mm -hmm. But it's still I, buying discounted notes with unsecured loans would be a totally different business than buying real estate secured loans. Right. And um, so, I think there's a I think there's a lot of myths about what's caused the market and I try to really go through a whole sequence and explain that because I think it's important for people to understand how you seek the opportunity. Owner financing, most people that think of owner financing think they're selling to a, a guy with a 500 credit score and 5% down and you know it just owner financing can be so much more successful than that and I was giving you an idea earlier before we started the broadcast about some ideas on your some of your rent houses right. of something that I'm very confident that'll work. Yeah. And that is you can sell it to an out of town investor with about 50% down and carry a fairly short term owner finance note for the remaining 50%. Probably amortize it in five or six years or less. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, um, without getting into, we, we only have a few more minutes, but without getting into a lot of details about the political side of where you think things might be going. If interest rates train, change dramatically, which I don't know exactly how you feel, I'm sure you'll tell me in just a second, but I, I think interest rates have got to go up sometime soon. How will that change the dynamic of, uh, from the note perspective? Well, on the non-performing note side, I'm, I'm dealing in people that buy assets at a triple, double, triple their money return, okay? So if interest rates double, <laughs> That's that's still 
you, the, the yield you're earning on those notes is way above what you know rates are going to push your factor out there. Right. Performing notes, um, what really happens in the performing note business is those notes pay off early. So you buy a 15 year note and you're thinking, well, I'm locked in for 15 years when the average life of this loan is probably more like five years. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, because people are selling I, or refinancing, is that? Yeah. I mean, and, and we're selling performing notes to just passive investors today. They're, they get, you know, if you took a financial calculator and backed into the return, it'd say that they're getting, you know, between 10, 12, 13% return on their money. Well, I mean, you got a lot of room in there for something to go wrong in the rate category. Right. And the problem is right now, and this is what I think this is what we see over and over is people have sat on their money. They can't find an investment that's paying them a good return. They can't wait for two years to go figure out what's going to happen to rates. They've got to get their money deployed. Yeah. Dry cash earns zero, right? Yeah. Kind of, sort of. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Eddie, if folks want to learn more about Note School and the stuff that you teach, uh, I know you have a lot of great products and a lot of great events. Where, where should they go to learn more? Uh, they could, you know, and, and I'll tell you this, uh, Mike, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give them a, a path that's free, so you can't beat the price. You could go to noteschool.com. There's a five video series that are going to kind of take, take a little more time and lay out these things. So there's a five video series right on noteschool.com, okay. right on the landing page. Just do that. It's actually me teaching uh, you know, a segment of the business. It's probably cumulatively a couple hours worth of training broke wow. into these videos. It's good stuff. Yeah. And um, it, you know, then somebody can kind of decide if they like it, if they want to learn more. Uh, we're not, um, we're certainly not yell and sell kind of guys. So, uh, you know, we, uh, we like people to go do something with us. If they like it, we can progress and see where we can take them down the road or if they just want to have a, a little deeper base of knowledge just so that they can learn how it might work within their real estate business. We're, we're okay with that. Yep. Yep. Great. Well, we'll add that link down below the video here too, for those that are watching right now and didn't sure. catch that. So, um, well, Eddie, Hey, thanks so much for, uh, letting us dip a toe in the water with notes and spending some time with us today. Great. Thank you for having yep, me. Yep. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Mike, right. Thank you. Are you a member of flipner.com? The most robust real estate investing platform in existence where you can find off-market wholesale deals and great vendors literally in your market. You can get access to advice from experts and learn about local clubs and events right in your backyard. If not, please visit flipner.com and register for a free account. You can register in less than a minute. It's pretty much the coolest site that's ever existed in the real estate investing industry. So get on over to flipner.com.